Hello, we're thankful that I'm here today. I have been studying the lessons on the Great Tribulation period, and everybody knows that this is going to happen. It's already beginning to happen now. So what I'm doing is giving the lessons in Revelation chapter 6 is a beginning of the first seals. And then chapter 4 is when of the book of Revelation, we as believers that have our great gift of eternal life as we receive the gift of God. This is in this book. And those people that are there, they have a number 666. And if you don't obey everything they say, then they are trying to kill you. And this is some of the things that I've been given. And I want to just guide, go over these just for a few minutes. This is the first six seals is Revelation 6. The reason I'm giving you these, you must understand, if you don't receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, you're going to an eternal hell. And these people, here's what they're doing to the people that are on the earth that has never received Christ as Savior. And this one says, now everybody knows that this is the Word of God in chapter 6, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. This is why I'm here for every person that don't know Christ. My heart has been burdened. I have served him for over 40 years. And when I started studying these, I had to get this out so everybody could understand and know the awful times that they have. It's all satanic powers, antichrist and everything. And this is the gift that God has given to us so we will never have to go through that. God did not make hell for people. He made hell for the s Satan and all of the evil that refuses to receive all the gifts that he's going to give up that I want to give to you today. And this is in chapter 8. Now I'm going to give you, I've already given you the saints on chapter 7, but I'm going to do those another time. And the second angel sounded. These are Revelation 8, chapter verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. These are the way that they are living. It's the most horrible time in the world. And the third part, verse 9, this is Revelation 8, 9, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. In verse 10, now this is, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the earth, the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. Now this is the greatest gift in the world to know that you will never be there. And then he says in chapter, five, chapter 9, we're going to go through that in just a few minutes, but you have to understand these and read them and give them to other people. And he says, and to them it was given that they should not kill these, them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, as he striketh a man. This is why I'm here, to give you the greatest eternal glory that God has given to us. And as you read these and have to know that these things are happening, they're already beginning to happen, you must receive the gift of eternal life. Let's pray. 
Oh, we're gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can come to the very throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee that Thine is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty and all that's in the heaven and the earth is Thine and Thou art exalted as head above all. All riches and honor come from Thee. And we want to worship Thee in spirit and in truth and offer the sacrifice of praise to Thee continually, the fruit of our lips given thanks unto Thee. All things come of Thee and of Thine own have we given Thee. And we're rejoicing in Thee today that He desires that every person that has not been born again by the Spirit of God, that we're asking for Thee today to say, I want to receive the gift of eternal life. And this is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears and we shall have the petitions we require of Thee. And these are the gifts that I pray for all of every person throughout this universe, 100 fold, because it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers, and I pray after you hear these lessons today that you're going to want to go to heaven in the clouds as he's going to take us. We're going to be raptured to be with him, and we're going to have a body of light, and we thank thee and praise thee for all the wonderful gifts that he gives us daily. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So the thing that I've got today is the most important lessons in the world. I can't just give you what the satanic powers are. I have to give you how great our God is. This is Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? See, this is what we have in him. Everything that happens, we are his child. We are a son of God. We are an heir of God. And the, we, have, uh, we are saints of light. The people that don't know Christ, they are in darkness. And Ephesians 4.32, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. We, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I have lived the abundant life, and I want every person to know it. And I brought these lessons on this book, and I can't read them all to you, but all that is in heaven is ours. And this is the only word that is to be given. This is the only word. We are to obey this word and to live for what he has taught us in this book. And that is why all of these are heavenly divine words. And every one of these, we have a new birth. We have conception. We have the guidance by the word of God. That's the only wisdom and knowledge that we have is the word of God and wisdom. I will give unto thee a mouth of wisdom and all of your adversaries cannot gainsay nor resist. We have eternal life. We have this living word that is ours and that's the only hope we have. We have nothing else that is pure as silver. This is Psalm 12, 6. These words are pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. There is nothing else in this life but this book. And that's why we, people don't read the word of God and they don't pray. And we have to obey what he says. And then he's the creator of all things. He knows our heart. He knows a number. He, 
knows the number of the stars and calls them all by name. He knows everything that we do. So this is his great love for us. And we have his great blessings that he's promised us. And this is what he says. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Satan has no power against us with the word of God. You see, this is what we have. Jesus said in John 11, 25 and 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, listen at this, and believeth in me shall never die. This is your promise. And this is why. Believest thou this, you have to believe. And you can't doubt. He says, you have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And now this is something that nobody can think about unless you know it in your own heart. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. And here, Luke 15.21, the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned. He never remembers our sin no more after we have been born again. Now, I'm going to give you some lessons to teach you how you can know that you are a child of God. And that is the answer to every person's life in the world. The book is a the Bible is a book of blood, the only thing that gives life to our teaching and power to the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the only person that could give us pure blood. He's the only person that went to the cross and died for us. So we would not have to go to an awful place called hell. He was beaten 39 stripes and he did it willingly. And our Heavenly Father gave him to us. And then the blood from Genesis to Revelation, we see the stream of blood which imparts to this word, the word of life, the very life of God. That's what we receive. And everybody is leaving him out. And he's the only person that we are to worship. And he says, the blood of the Lamb alone is a title to glory. John 1:29. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And this is the most powerful weapon in the world. And we are to worship him, to be given to God alone, deity. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Why don't we quit? with the phone sitting with them and reading the word of God and praying to somebody that loves us with an eternal love and every promise in this book, no matter how many times you look there and to see all of these verses, these are what he has done for us. Heavenly divine eternal promises and the priest unto God and his Father. That's what we are. We're priests of God. And that's the only people that can pray. Our prayers, as we look for this in chapter 8 that we've already had, he says, now he, our prayers are written in heaven. He says in chapter 8, verse 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. They use our prayers. And I've been praying almost every day for 40 years for a hundredfold. And this is for you. And everybody prays for me because I've served the Lord for over 40 years for the glory of God. Because God loves you. Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the whole world. And I love you the same as he does. 
Once again, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this is that he should offer these prayers of the saints unto the golden altar, which was before the throne. And he, the fourth, eight, chapter eight, Revelation, verse four. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there was forces and thunderings and lightnings and on the earth an earthquake. You see, the earthquakes are already starting. And that's what they're doing there to kill all the people that don't have their number in their forehead, 666. They kill them all. And this is what is happening today. And you know that we, we are never to even hate another person. We can hate another person. He tells us this in this lesson. And this is amazing because as people, he says in this word, in First John, you, I'm on, I want you to read First John this week, this whole week. My little children, First John chapter 2. These things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And this is the sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That's what I pray for every person. And he says, but he that hateth is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. And this is chapter three, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. We can't hate another person. We're to love one another the way he loves us. And then if we don't, then we can't love another person if we don't have his love, his Holy Spirit. His holy temple is in us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. So to just to give you a, just a little sample of how great we are loved, and this is the only love that is real. This is the only truth that is pure. And that's how we are to live. So I had to give you that this day to show you how God has given me the greatest life at 86 years old. And having served him for over 40 years, I have been the most blessed person in the world. I want every person in this universe I pray for a hundredfold all the time. And everybody prays for me because I'm on YouTube. And they are going, get, being saved every day. So this is why I want you. God can't hear a prayer unless he's in you. The Spirit of God has to live in us. And I will pr give you some other lessons on the Spirit of God. We are sealed by the Spirit of God. That's what we learned. If you miss that lesson on chapter seven, that's what they did. Sir, they sealed. I have to give it to you so you don't miss it because you have to read what I give to you. He hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now that's 140. This is what he, he did. 144,000 of the tribes of Israel. And they're in serving the Lord. And they can't touch them. They are sealed. And this is, I read this before, but I want you to listen to what these men were doing. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having their father's name in their forehead. This is Revelation 14, chapter two, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harping, harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song. We're to sing about Christ, nothing else. Before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could number 
could learn the song that the 144,000 had were redeemed from the earth. You see, this is what we live by. And then verse 4 of chapter 14. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they were virgins. You know, everybody today is to be a virgin. Everybody today. That's the only thing we knew when we were growing up. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. That's how we're to live. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Those 144,000 are going to be there for the whole seven years, and they can't touch them. He cannot touch us. All satanic powers are conquered when we are obeying the word of God. I will give unto thee a mouth of wisdom, and all of your adversaries cannot gainsay nor resist. And verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And do you know? We are to go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. That's what every believer should be doing today. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit. I pray the hardest prayer for me to pray these prayers daily is suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. That's my most broken hearted to see any child not loved. And then he says in verse 7, this is Revelation 14, 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains and the water. He did everything in this book for us. And this is why I'm here today for you. And then I'm going to begin in chapter 9 of this chapter and what is happening, the bottomless pit and the locusts. Chapter 9, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now we have in chapter 9, verse 11, the king over the bottomless pit, there here, the Hebrew name is Abaddon, and the Greek tongue is Apollon. They are both destroyers. And, and verse 3 now, that's what we see. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, the bottomless pit. Now this is verse 3, chapter 9. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. You see, this is breaking my heart right now to think any person would not know these truths and accept Christ and obey Satan, and this is what they're trying to do, kill everybody. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. 
and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. The beasts were men, and they're like a person. And verse 8, they had a hair, hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses run into battle. And they had their tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Verse 11, I just gave you that, the two kings of the bottomless pit, and then in chapter 12, Verse 12, one wo woe is past. Three woes is what they have. And behold, there came two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which the bound was in the great river. Euphrates, verse 15, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. There's nothing but pain and sorrow, and it never ends. And those that have to go through that, they can't ever get out of there after they take that seal. That means it's never ending what I'm giving to you. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the visions, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire. And these three issues, fire, smoke, and brimstone is what they were using. By these three were the third part of men killed. The fire, the smoke, and the brimstone. And the smoke by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, and for their power is in their mouth, and to, in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads with them, they do hurt. Now I'm going to give you verse 20 and 21, but I want you to see how people are thinking about what is happening. And I'm praying that you will turn to Christ today. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, and they should, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which never can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorcerers, nor are their fornication, nor are their for the thefts. I pray today that every person will get the word of God out Read the book of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and get fall on your knees and ask God to save you. I've prayed for you for all these years, for every person in this universe. And this is, I had to give you something about our Lord. He's the one that has given us all of this. I want you to pray and give your life to Him right now. I love all of you just like God loves you. Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the whole world.